spots for you, essentially the cross-sectional, the cross-sectional where the crown shape uh, is, where I would like the screw access hole to be, and I would like the screw access hole to be in the central fossa in this case. You see a hole where I want the top of the implant to be. Now on the other side, I have placed in place the buccal lingual positioner, and so now I'm locking in all these, uh, all these parameters. I'm doing that also for the other tooth, and put everything together, and now you can see I have a relatively tight uh, situation, not, uh, not crazy, but the 3D click guide system allows you to automatically get the right distance between the dental implants, three millimeters, and a millimeter and a half from the neighboring, from the neighboring tooth. So um, uh, that will be, um, by the virtue of the way it's designed, an automatic that you will, uh, that you will get. So we put everything together, um, connect the wings with orthodontic acrylic to the vacuoform, uh, remove the crossbar. So now I have these um, uh, rails uh, exposed and available. Go to the mouth, we place it in, and we take, uh, we take an x-ray because, again, everything has been determined, but the mesodistal angle that I have can be wrong. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take an x-ray, and as you can see, I'm not completely overlapping, but sufficiently for me to see that the angulation that I have is acceptable and, and that we're going to be using zero-degree rotation blocks in this case. Now, uh, again, as I said, guided surgery does not at all mean flapless surgery. It just means guided surgery. It means that in this case, I know that I want to add some uh, um, connective tissue towards the buckle of this case. Although I am pretty certain that my implant is going to be an 8-millimeter implant, I'd rather be safe. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm using in this case the drills from, uh, from Astra, and they have drills that are 18.7-millimeter um, with a fixed uh, stop. I've placed a millimeter and a half flexi stop on there. So I'm actually going to be drilling a millimeter and a half less than the 8-millimeter uh, um, osteotomy for an eight millimeter implant. And I'm doing that because I just want to be sure that what I measured, I did it right. I measure, I measure again, and I measure again, and only then do I drill. So you see, in this case, I've determined that I can be a millimeter and a half uh, uh, longer than what, I, uh, than what I have there. So I will now finish my osteotomies to uh, the full length of this uh, drill. I do it on both sides. And then we're going to, uh, in this case, again from Noble Biker, the starter drill to flatten out the top uh, of the ridge. I now go to the 3.2 millimeter, uh, to the 3.2 millimeter drill at full length, and then we are going to check with uh, our instrument that the osteotomies are all uh, correct and uh, everything is good. Um, and then, because this implant is a somewhat has a tapered uh, shape. Uh, and I'm using straight drills, I'm actually adding a 3-millimeter flexi stop to my 3.7-millimeter drill. That means that I am drilling the osteotomy 5 millimeters at 3.7, so I basically get a step-back uh, preparation. Um, this will allow you to have straight drills, but be able to get uh, essentially a preparation for a, tapered, uh, for a tapered implant. As I showed you before, I'm using magenta mites and eye drops, um, a few drops on there, um, very simple. I, uh, it has worked well. In orthopedics, they have been using that uh, for, uh, forever, uh, mixing with the bone grafts, and I think we in dentistry are increasingly uh, do doing that also. So now, the, the top of the rotation block, the top of the surgical guide, is nine millimeters above the top of the implant. The drill guides are one millimeter thick, so nine plus one is 10. So if you want to place a 10 millimeter implant, you will have a drill that is 10 plus 10 is 20 millimeters long. This also helps you when you want to place the implant, when you have the vertical control. Although in this case with the conus implant, uh, which is not a, a very aggressive implant in that uh, once it has bottomed out, it's not gonna go much, uh, much further. Um, so, but you can see in this case, I have placed a flexi stop on there, so now I know for a fact that if I bring this down, then I'm exactly at the spot where I want the, t the shoulder of the implant to be. So here we see the uh, implants have been placed, uh, and we have a little bit 
of uh, exposure on the bottle uh, of our first uh, of our first implant. So what we do, we use a little scalpel to graft to uh, um, get a little bit of the bone that we had too much on one side. So now uh, you can see because I placed it on the bottle, we didn't suction there anymore. So we have a little uh, patient's bone on, on the bottle. Then we add some non resorbable or very low resorbable uh, material in there, which in this case is BioOS to kind of protect that site. And then I'm using um, from um, Osseo, Osseo Health, uh, instead of going to the palate and get some uh, connective tissue, I just get it from um, the little box here, uh, mucograft, and place it on the buckle. Because I showed you before, this case had no attached tissue at all when we started. We increased somewhat when we did our first uh, procedure, and so as we moved along, uh, we, got, uh, we got more. So we bring it in there, and we close up uh, our site. And here we see the two implants uh, placed. So now you can see that you can very easily work very, very controlled above a critical um, uh, anatomical uh, component as the um, mandibular nerve uh, is for us and know for sure that you are not by accident drilling a millimeter more, that you got everything exactly right. So we see the same situation now six weeks later. Uh, you see no bone loss at all um, the, on, uh, on our conus implants, and you see that we really have nicely moved uh, and, 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 and enhanced the attached tissue on the buckle um, of this site. So we're going to the implant procedure. This is also parts from uh, Blue Sky that will allow you to first be the impression coping, but then uh, your dental lab uh, can actually uh, prep those um, as they were um, um, uh, abutments. And in this case, I cannot show you the clinical picture yet because the patient uh, um, has not uh, been in my office, but these are the crowns that actually bonded onto the prepped uh, abutments. Uh, and so in this case, we have porcelain fused to metal crowns, but that are bonded to the abutments and that are going to be screw retained. So we have no chance of cement uh, going underneath um, our soft tissue. Now, let's have a look at uh, um, another case, also a little bit more advanced. In this case, we're going to use a Blue Sky Bio Cronus implant, a 4x11. And in this case, we're going to pre-make the provisional before we actually go into surgery. So here we see Hank. Hank uh, um, is a, a BMX rider and falls on his face quite often. Um, he did it one time in, uh, abroad, and they took the tooth out. And so now he presented, but obviously you know if you have no socket grafting done, you have a buckle defect. And so we have a buckle defect um, uh, on this site. We're going to the same planning as we showed you before. Um, I like denture teeth, and they are very, very fast, and, uh, and they will last my career. So this is a, a fast wax up for uh, where the tooth uh, should be. And here we see the shots because now we're going to use the buccal lingual. One of the things that you will see on our website is that if you are a dental technician or if you want your dental technician to uh, do this, the positioning of the BLP is a surgical decision. That means that you cannot have somebody else responsible for that. The surgeon is the person who is responsible for that. On our website, you can just take a photo with your little iPhone, nothing special, and you can download it, you can calibrate it, and now you can position a virtual BOP on there so you can communicate. So as you can see, in this case, uh, we have that BOP set in such a way that I can just beautifully get a screw retained restoration far enough to the lingual that I will not get chipping of my porcelain uh, in the future, far enough towards the buckle that I do not get an increased uh, uh, volume uh, of, my, um, of, my palatal, uh, of my palatal cingulum. So the position of the BOP, as I would like it to be, so now again, within the decision tree, the only thing I'm looking at where is this going to be buccal lingually and where is the top of this implant uh, going to be. Now, mesiodistally, I can now determine the exact position where I want to be this to be mesiodistally. I want it in general a little bit more towards the lateral, so I can have a little bit more chance that I get a zenith that is a little bit more distalized uh, um, uh, on this tooth and not exactly, not exactly in the middle. Um, clearly, when you set up these things, you want to look at the position of the contralateral central. If you see that that root um, uh, makes a big swing, then you know that there is a foramen in between, so you just do the same uh, position of the other root and you will always be, uh, be good. So now we connect this with the orthogrylic to the vacuum form and uh, we will um, uh, 
not go to the mouth yet, because what we're going to do is I remove the buccal lingual positioner, I uh, cut away uh, some space, because we're going to make the provisional restoration before we actually see the patient in our chair. And so now in this case, this is a part that I kind of constructed uh, myself. Um, that there are certain companies that have guided instrumentation that would be compatible with us, a guided carry that we would use. But in this case, I used the analog from um, the, um, the impression post, I'm sorry, uh, and I glued that into a rotation block in such a way that the top of the rotation block is nine millimeters above the top of the implant. So that is the prolongation, as they call that, the prolongation that we use. Uh, Noble Biocare uses standard, uh, this prolongation. Um, Strauman uses um, H2, H4, H6. So these are two millimeters more, two millimeters less. Um, there are certain systems that even have more, uh, more leeway there. This is a, but this is a fixed uh, prolongation. Now, we now are placing the uh, analog on there. I used some integrity, this is the material uh, one, uh, that we use to make temporary crowns. I inject it in there and I place this contraption in there. So now when I take this, when it has set and I take this out, I now have this analog in exactly the same position where the future implant is going to be. Don't forget, the patient doesn't have the implant yet, but this is going to be the exact position. So this is an application that even if you have a lot of experience placing implants, only if you do something like this or use a computer um, will you be able to know all these things beforehand. So now, uh, in this case, we use from Astra because this is a system which is uh, fully Astra compatible. We use a component from Astra. There's a temporary cylinder. Um, as you can see, I have to modify that a little bit so it will fall within the contours um, uh, of the future crown. And one of the things uh, that uh, every dentist should have tons of in his dental office is plumber's tape or a polytetic fluoroethylene tape. Um, it works for everything and it works very nicely here to, uh, to isolate uh, what we're going to do because I'm gonna use just a regular temporary material, the same that we use uh, to, uh, to make our temporary crowns in our office. And I'm injecting that around it uh, in the little uh, shell that we made. And now when I take this out, I can remove the, the plumber's tape and uh, we can clean up uh, what we have. So now obviously we know the outside, we know the gingival margin and Step by step, we can use a little bit of flowable uh, composite to really generate the, uh, the emergence profile uh, that we want uh, for this tooth. So we now go, uh, patient comes in, we go to the mouth, we uh, place it in. As you can see, the x-ray in the middle is not shot exactly straight because I can see the two overlap. The one on the right side is shot exactly straight, so we have the right uh, trajectory for this. We're gonna use a zero degree green rotation block because everything is good. Um, uh, the bird's eye view, the worm's eye view, I'm sorry, um, as we have it. Um, and as I said before, in this case, because we have some uh, resorption, because there was no uh, socket preservation done, we're going to flap and we're going to graft um, a, a little bit. So we make a flap, we fill a sparing incision, we use the um, facilitate drills from Astra uh, at the length that uh, we uh, um, uh, determined, 11 millimeters. Um, and so this is a 13 millimeter drill set at 11 and a half uh, with the drill guides from, uh, from uh, Idon DV. And so we have our two millimeter osteotomy. There's our two millimeter osteotomy. Now what I'm doing, I'm moving to a drill from Bicon. Bicon is a different implant company. Um, and this actually is a latch reamer. So one of the things that I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to use a three millimeter latch reamer at 50 RPMs, no water, to increase the diameter of my osteotomy